Among the next legend's five Grammys are awards for record and album of the year. She's one of my idols, and tonight she's chosen to one, honor one of her idols with a song that's been inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2008. She told me she's always loved this song, and I can relate to it too. I remember being 17 like it was yesterday, or <laughs> last year. Either way, singing Janice Ian's Grammy winning at 17, please welcome Celine Dion. <laughs>
Thank you. I don't think there's any honor I treasure more than my Grammy for Album of the Year, and I'm sure these nominees will feel the same way when their names are announced. It all happened in 1999. Two musicians from opposite ends of the world, musically and geographically, each won Grammy Awards, not knowing that 10 years later, they would blend those worlds together and create one of this year's most exciting CDs. That same year, an English band recorded their first album and began their journey to worldwide stardom and four Grammy Awards. At the same time, a young rapper, just 16 years old, released his first solo album. And a critically acclaimed band, having just lost the Grammy for Album of the Year, regrouped and changed their musical direction. And a 19-year-old R&B songwriter was honing his craft and taking his first steps towards tonight. And a nomination for Album of the Year. Each of their journeys was different, but tonight, their paths converge. And the Grammy nominees for Album of the Year are... Coldplay for Viva La Vida, a death of all his friends. Lil Wayne for The Carter Three. Neo for Year of the Gentleman. Robert Plant and Alison Cross for Raising Sam. And Radiohead for In Rainbows. Congratulations to all the nominees. Trust me, one of you is going to love this award.